Hello, my name is Jesper Logren and welcome to the Consultant Toolbox. Today, we're going to talk about the digital operating model. Yay! How exciting! To understand the digital operating model, it helps to first understand what the operating model is. And to understand what the operating model is, it helps to understand the business model because they're two closely related concepts and cousins. The business model describes how an organization captures value from its customers. The operating model describes how the organization is run to capture value. Let's begin by having a quick look at the business model. And we're going to have a sneak preview of what's called the business model canvas developed by Alex Osterwald at strategizer.com. And the business model is really centered around two key concepts, the customer, or the customer segment and the customer persona on one hand, and the value proposition, that is the product and the service or value that we're providing to customer. So the customer and the value proposition are the two core elements of a business model. And now we are ready to dig a little bit deeper into the operating model. And remember, the operating model is about how an organization is run. The business model is about how an organization generates value. The business model we learned has two key concepts, the customer and the value proposition. The operating model also has key concepts, but they're different, of course. The first one is your workflow or your core processes, which are supporting the value proposition. But you have other elements too, your organization structure, all of your systems, all of your IT. In the business model, we talk about the customer. In the operating model, we talk about the supplier. So all of these elements make up an operating model. This is an example of a filled out operating model canvas for a small IT consulting company. Looking at this canvas, we can see how the consulting company operates and we can see how it differentiates. It's very clear. So is this the end of the conversation? Is there nothing else to be said about operating models? It's not quite that simple because there's something lurking in the background. There's a system within the system, an operating model within the operating model. And this is what we need to understand to fully understand the digital operating model. This system is hidden in plain sight and you probably know it already as process, people, technology. But you may not know that this system is more than 150 years old and originated in the beginning of the second industrial revolution, which started around 1870. Back then, organizations started to grow rapidly, but they didn't have systems for growth. So what do you do? You look elsewhere and that's exactly what they did. And they found something very interesting in the military. The first thing they found was the military command structure designed to manage lots and lots and lots of people. Great business thought. The second thing the military had, they were very good at shipping things forward and backwards from the front line to the back line and back to the front line. Business took that as well, called it logistics. And the third thing business was really impressed with was that the military is very good at technology and using technology as a differentiator. So the business took all of these concepts and made it their own. Yet to understand this model uh, fully, there's something else we also need to understand. And we need to understand the purpose of the model and what it actually does. And that's quite easy to describe because this model does one thing, it produces things. It's about mass production, producing goods, and of course today, producing services. The problem with the model is that it's really slow. It's a model that's 150 years old. It's based on times where change was slow and it's not quite fit for purpose today. You've probably seen a similar picture before. It's not very exciting, it's not very new, but this picture hides something very important. Let's play. Let's go back in time, 500 years. You're a blacksmith, I'm your apprentice and I'm not particularly good. And I'm hammering a horseshoe and you're looking at me and I'm doing it all wrong. What do you do? This is year 1500. Do you ask me to fetch an iPad? Well, of course not. 
you ask me to fetch your book? Mm, probably not. What you do is to stand next to me and show me how to do it. And this has been the world pretty much for 50,000 years, show and tell. We are learning by observing, we are learning through process, we are learning through observing other people doing it, and we do it ourselves. It's pretty much how we are brought up. That's how we learn how to walk. But something is missing, something really important, and it has been missed by a lot of people. Because around the same time as the Industrial Revolution, something else happened, something critically important. The Western world systematically started to teach its citizens to read and write. Why is this important? Well, if you can't read and write, you can't generate data. This is important because for 50,000 years, we have not been able to generate any meaningful amount of data and we have been relying on process and show and tell. It's only in the last 250 years that we've been able to generate data. That means that we have a bit of a proportional issue here. 250 years of data experience versus 50,000 years of process experience. And this is an even bigger problem if we put it in the context of the world that we're going into. We are going into the digital world where everything is data. And finally, the digital operating model, the one you have all been waiting for. Can you see what's different? Yes, it's green and not orange. Right answer, not quite what I expected. There's another thing. We have replaced process with data. Replacing process with data doesn't mean that the process disappeared. Just as in an analog operating model, you have process and you have data underneath. Exactly the same thing in the digital operating model. You still have process, but you focus on data. So some of the obvious differences in organization that have adopted a digital operating model is this data focus, data governance, and data quality, because data drives these kinds of organizations. So let's examine the digital operating model a bit closer and see what makes it different. Firstly, it replaces the organizational structure with collaboration. The digital operating model promotes collaboration, co-creation, agility, and cross-functional working. It is also insights and data-driven. The digital operating model assumes that the organization is making decisions from data and insights and not from opinions. And is assuming a platform. That is, we have technology that can be reused and data that can be reused. So what's a digital operating model ultimately about? can be summed up in one word, scale. Scale is growth at near zero marginal cost. Fancy that, growth at no cost. How cool is that? I like to think of scale across two dimensions, scale in depth and in breadth. Let's start with depth. That's typically when organization starts. And when you scale in depth, you're leveraging your own resources through automation to create scale. For example, sales and marketing automation, robotic process automation, etc. Ultimately, scale in depth is about differentiating and using digital technology to differentiate as much as possible and as fast as possible. A quick summary. A business model describes how an organization creates value. An operating model describes how an organization is run. The current analog operating model, people, process, technology, is 150 year old. And the problem with this model is that it doesn't scale and it doesn't change. Hence, we need the digital operating model. And the difference between a digital operating model and an analog operating model is that we are replacing process with data. It doesn't mean that the process disappears. It means that the focus is shifting from process to data. And this allows us to do something very, very important in business today, which is to scale. And there are two kinds of scale. 
scale in depth, which is about automation, which is about differentiation and provide better service, better products, a better customer experience, and scale in breadth, which is really about our reach, which is about ecosystems and scaling into new markets. And I hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you have, please like it, or even better, engage with comments. See you soon.